What's up, guys? Who's ready to get creepy on the internet and do creepy things and look up creepy stuff? What's up, guys? Today we're going to be exploring the CD underbelly of the internet in a segment I like to call the hidden internet. Stay tuned. All right, guys, glad you stuck with us. Today we've got a lot of content to cover. First, I'm gonna start with uh, this article request page. Um, some of you may not know, but I do articles by request, tutorials, anything. If you don't understand something or you just wanna hear it come from me, let me know. Go to geekblog.tv slash request, fill out the simple form, and it goes straight to my phone. So you guys go ahead and make use of that, and uh, with that being said, we're gonna get started on the deep web. So a lot of you are wondering, what is the deep web? What goes on in the deep web? You hear a lot of things about like the dark net, Silk Road, Tor, all the really nasty stuff that goes on on the internet happens pretty much on the deep web. Let's go over some facts about the deep web. I found this, uh, this nice page on the bot network and this uh, fellow on there, forgot what his name is, but he went ahead and explained everything to us. So I'm going to go over it, just, uh, just some quick facts about the deep web. Uh, public information on the deep web is currently 400 to 550 times larger than the commonly defined World Wide Web. The deep web contains 7,500 terabytes of information compared to 19 terabytes of information in the surface web. I don't know how, how, how recent that is, but that's a pretty staggering figure. It says more than 200,000 deep websites presently exist. 60 of the largest deep websites collectively contain about 750 terabytes of information, sufficient by themselves to exceed the size of the surface web 40 times. Now that's pretty impressive. Um, what kind of things are on the deep web? Well, in my experience, uh, there's a lot of things you don't want to run into. Uh, there's a lot of covert kind of communications, things that don't uh, necessarily need to be out on the world wide web. What makes it the deep web, and not to be confused with dark fiber, which would be uh, vast offline networks that kind of circumvent the whole uh, architecture of the internet in order to share files. We're talking more uh, computers that are hosting content that is not being indexed by search engines. Google primarily is the biggest indexer of information out there uh, as far as consumer grade indexing. So Google caches HTTP and HTTPS and things like that and uh, just crawls around. If you're running something like FTP, Gopher, or uh, you know, here with uh, the deep web, there's not going to be any index going on. You're not going to type hey, where can I buy some hookers and gold online? And it's, it's not going to say, hey, head on down to the Silk Road. You know, not that you can buy hookers and... You might be able to buy hookers and gold online. <laughs> but there's a lot of websites that run on there. Uh, one of the most notorious ones that gets a lot of press is called the Silk Road. So for those of you that don't know, the Silk Road used to be a place where you could go and buy uh, drugs, guns, uh, illicit activities, things like that. These days, they got rid of the gun portion of the site. I believe they moved it to what was called the Armory, and that doesn't even exist anymore, to my knowledge. So, currently what they have on the, uh, the Silk Road, let me go over it here. Um, I believe I have a tab right here about the Silk Road Marketplace, and just a quick overview from Wikipedia says, The website launched in February 2011, with the development having begun three months prior. Buyers can register on Silk Road for free, but sellers must purchase new accounts through au auctions to mitigate the possibility of malicious individuals distributing tainted goods. As of, two as of 2012, annual sales are estimated to be $22 million. The majority of products sold on Silk Road qualify as contraband in most jurisdictions. Most sellers are based in the United Kingdom and the United States and offer products such as heroin, LSD, cannabis, and other drugs. However, the site's operators prohibit goods or services intended to harm others, such as stolen credit card numbers, counterfeit currency, personal info, assassinations, weapons of mass destruction, and materials used to make such weapons. So if there are rules against these type of things on the website, you know, there's chances that people have tried to sell those things on there before. Um, overall, I haven't heard of too many deals going bad over the Silk Road, but enough of the fear, uncertainty, and doubt. I'm not here to scare you guys. Let's go over some of the things that we use to access the deep web. I'm guessing that you can't just walk in the front door and say, hey guys, I need an eighth. Who's got one? So uh, let's, let's talk about some of the software that's used for it. So some of the most popular software would be Freenet, I2P, John Doe, and Tor. Today we're going to focus on Tor. Tor is the onion router. 
So I believe they say it pretty succinctly here, so I'm not going to mince words or summarize anything, but Tor is a free software and open network that helps you defend against a form of network surveillance that threatens personal freedom and privacy, confidential business activities and relationships, and state security known as traffic analysis. So what Tor does, Tor stands for the, the onion router. So as you can imagine, uh, what it does is it sets up rings of... Uh, let's just say intermediaries. I don't know if you guys ever played that game in school where you whisper a word into somebody's ear and then they whisper that word into another person's ear and they whisper the word and by the time it gets around it's all jumbled up. Well Tor acts kind of the same way except that last person to get the message gets the message completely in the clear. Think of each person you talk to as a layer of this onion. So let's say I go to uh, how to hack the White House .gov or something like that, whatever kind of website I want to go to, my computer sets up a connection between that endpoint computer with several intermedi intermediaries in between. So what that means to you as the regular user is, if you just pull up Chrome or something like that, all of those computers along the way are going to be able to see your traffic for the most part, and anything unencrypted can be easily sniffed. So as you guys have uh, learned in some of our previous articles, sniffing traffic on a network is no serious business. It's n not very difficult. So what Tor does is it distributes your traffic to random nodes, or well, pseudo-random nodes, along the way. And every time it jumps from node to node, it's going to randomize and anonymize that traffic. So uh, there's, there's some encryption going on, and the, the people along the way are going to have a very hard time pinpointing what you're doing if you're being safe. So Tor has its vulnerabilities. You're not going to be wanting to torrent over, over uh, Tor. It just does not work that way. Uh, it will give up your position. Also, there are some other things like JavaScript and Flash, which have been known to uh, roll over on you in the times of need. So, what most of us do, and what the easiest thing to do, is to set up what is called Tor Browser, or using a service like tor to web so, I went ahead and grabbed a copy of Tor Browser. Uh, it should be in my downloads folder here. I went ahead and did not set it up just so that you guys could see how easy it is. So, I'm going to go to my downloads folder. As you can see, I've got a couple of other things that I've downloaded here. Uh, for the first time, I opened up my downloads folder and didn't have to clean it out and reshoot the video. So, I'm happy about that. Uh, what I'm going to do is just open up this file. I'm running uh, Linux right now. so. This might look a little bit different to you, but it's pretty much the same in every operating system. You're just going to extract the Tor Browser folder, and once you've extracted the folder, you open it, and then click Start Tor Browser. So, what pops up is called the Vidalia Control Panel. So, in this control panel, uh, it's doing in the background what took a lot of time and effort back in the day whenever Tor was first getting started. Uh, when things first started getting started, <laughs> that sounds kind of weird, but whenever things uh, were brand new, you had to set up Tor manually, and you had to set up uh, different apps like Tor Button, Vidalia as the front end, and uh, other things that made it prohibitive for normal users to be using Tor. The way that Tor works, the more people that are on the network, the better. So from this simple little control panel here, uh, well, actually, as you can see, it's popping up a browser. We're going to go into that a little bit later. But this control panel right here tells you whether you're connected to the Tor network or not. In a second, I'm going to show you a page that you can navigate to that will tell you if you've been safely routed through the Tor network. So here we have a couple of options. You can stop Tor. You can set up relaying, which means passing traffic through you. You can become a relay. You can view the network that you're currently connected to, or you can use a new identity. Now, let's say that you're, I don't know, spamming a certain blog or something like that. Every time you leave a comment, your IP address is recorded. So, let's say, you know, you're advocating against hostile religions like Scientology or something like that, and they have a pretty aggressive web administrator who is blocking IP ranges of dissenting comments. Well, what you can do is click use a new identity and effectively establish a new path throughout the internet 
to a new ending IP address, which could help you out if uh, you keep getting IP banned in certain places. Other people might also use this to circumvent certain filters like the Gemma uh, filter on YouTube to watch uh, YouTube videos. I have a friend, uh, Spire, from Germany who has issues with looking at these videos through um, just regular internet browser because I don't know what's going on in Germany but they don't want you to be looking at uh, public enemy music videos online so this would come into uh, you know it's, it's quite handy so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click view the network so that you can see all the computers that I'm connected to right now I'm screenshotting this so that you can see everything uh, quite clearly if you can't see anything uh, just boost the resolution, go to 1080 or 720, whatever's available to you, and check out my screen. So, we can see all of the connections that are associated with my relay. Okay, as you can see, uh, there's a world map here, there's different uh, information available to me regarding the other people that are on my relay. So, you don't really have to worry about these people right here uh, browsing or snooping your traffic. The one person that can see your traffic, though, is the endpoint. Like I said, everything gets shuffled around uh, the internet, it gets re-encrypted, re-anonymized, and that endpoint is the only one that truly gets to see your traffic. Just as with a VPN or with other proxy services, the endpoint is the... It's, it has to be in clear text coming out of there, uh, for the most part, for the other server to understand uh, what what information it needs to relay back and forth. It can't be encrypted the entire way through. But it does, um, you know, it does provide a reasonable amount of security when used correctly. So let's do a test. I'm going to go to just my regular browser right here that we already have open. I'm going to ask what is my IP address? What is my IP? Here is my public IP address. Don't worry guys, it will be changed by the time you're watching this video. If not, feel free having a go at my network. So, uh, if we go over to Tor, this is going to be a completely different address. So, we're going to copy this address right here. We are going to go to my other window that we have open. Whoops. Alright. And our IP address appears to be 31.172.30.2. But just for shits and giggles, let's check it out at whatismyip.com so that we can have a uh, nice reference uh, for what the IP address has changed to uh, since we pulled up that website on both of them now. Uh, you'll notice that things are going through a little bit slower. As can be expected, when you're relaying traffic through all these different networks, sometimes there will be a little bit of a hiccup and a little bit of a stutter. So if that doesn't work, as you can see this connection right here did not work, uh, you can use a new identity and just shuffle around until you find something that works. But it seems to be going through now, so I'm anxious to see what our IP is, if it is indeed 31.7.whatever. As you can see, patience is the name of the game when it comes to using Tor. Alright, so there we go. My IP address is 31.172.32, and no proxy is connected, or detected, sorry about that. Um, so what what use is this to us? You know, what can you do once you're connected to Tor? Well, my friends, there is this thing that we like to call the hidden wiki. Uh, as some of you may know, Wikipedia is a place where you can find indexes of content and there's little guides about things. Well, of course, there's a hidden wiki to show you about the wonderful things that you can find in the world of the onion. So, uh, let me get rid of these windows real quick so that I can see my links a little bit better. And uh, I've already pulled up something about the, uh, the Hidden Wiki here. Alright, so as we can tell, here's a screenshot of the Hidden Wiki. I pulled it up just in case that it was going to take a long time to load on Tor. Uh, I'll zoom in real quick so that you guys can see a little bit better. But the Hidden Wiki is going to show you a categorized... Um, a listing of all the juicy parts of Tor. Now I have to I have to warn you guys 
there are some things on there that you might not want to see so please be sure that you're clicking links you know judiciously uh, don't just go clicking around all willy-nilly because it's inevitable you will run across something that you do not want to see uh, so just going through real quick there's uh, some different categories there's the introduction point the tour network anonymous finance this is where you're gonna find things like tour bank bitcoin for cash uh, coin tumbler which is a bitcoin anonymizer which is pretty good for those of you that are into bitcoins uh, bitcoin just real quick is an anonymous currency that uses something very similar uh, to the Tor network in the way that it anonymizes your currency so that your spending cannot be traced anything you buy on the silk road is going to be using bitcoin so moving right along we have different types of, of hosting here i prefer storage uh, that one runs pretty well with Tor, as the name implies. Paste Onion is also pretty good. Uh, we have some different web hosts right here. Um, anything that's going to be hosted through Tor, or not hosted through Tor, but accessible to something that's hosting a hidden service. Uh, uh, wow, I forgot where I was going with that one. But basically, you have to set up a hidden service for to have a Tor-only website like the Silk Road. Anything with a dot .onion on the end is going to be a hidden uh, Tor service. Uh, you can hide an FTP server, you can hide a website, you can hide pretty much anything you want. You can publish your entire hard drive and hide it on a dot .onion site. Um, there is something uh, called Orbot that I actually use to facilitate setting up a hidden uh, service on Android. I've got it set up on this Android right here and the great thing that I like about Orbot is I can go through and tell it to put different apps through uh, the Tor network here. So, you know, just simply installing Orbot isn't going to make everything go through it. I can tell it that uh, I want all of my voice over IP traffic to go through Tor or I want just my Dolphin browser traffic to go through Tor. So you can see where I'm going with this. You can also set up hidden uh, services which are pretty good if you're trying to run a hidden web server. So uh, let's move right along and uh, you know just keep going. Um, I found a couple of uh, sources of good information that's kind of similar to the hidden wiki. I'm going to be including all of these links to all these tabs that I'm using in the comments. So one that is really good is deepwebresearch.info. It forwards to this, uh, this paper right here. And at first I thought this guy was just listing all of his sources, but no. If you go down every page, it is nothing but the good stuff as far as uh, things about the hidden web, things that are hidden on there, uh, different search engines, different things that you can use to crawl the deep web. The, you're not going to be able to just Google, hey, where do I find the newest Twilight? <laughs> Who am I kidding? You're not going to search for that. Uh, who can find uh, insert X movie that hasn't come out yet? You're not going to Google for an Onion site for that. Uh, you're going to find something on this nice little list of links here that will you know, take you along your way. So, uh, here's a wiki about the Silk Road. I'm going to skip over that real quick. Uh, I also have this paste bin right here that has some of the, uh, some of the juicier things as far as uh, the black hattery goes. So, uh, we have something that's similar to 4chan right here. This, uh, this one was particularly scary for me whenever I, whenever I went on there. Um, it's uh, definitely a sight to be seen. Uh, there's some other things on here like the hidden wiki. Uh, these dot onion addresses aren't readily available as these uh, servers that are hosting them migrate around uh, with much need. Uh, things like the, uh, the Silk Road have uh, an address that is not readily available like you're not going to find it by going through Google the Silk Road or something like that. You have to go to like the Silk Road wiki and find the current link there. I know it's not you know, uh, it's not exactly security by obscurity, but, you know, kind of keeps the, kind of keeps the idiots out. So, just moving right along here, we have different blogs, we have forums and boards and chans, uh, things that I'm sure you're quite familiar with. We also have email and messaging here. Oh yeah, a quick, a quick little note about email. Don't log in, I, I hate that I have to say this, but don't log into your personal services, uh, through Tor. You don't want to have anything 
uh, going through here like logins, uh, any non-HTTPS traffic that requires any type of authentication, anything where your details that can be connected to your personal life, don't use it on there. It's probably not the best idea because you've pretty much given up the magic there. All right, on through the list we have whistleblowing with a site that you might remember called WikiLeaks. Now it's it it's pretty suck now, but back in the day it was pretty good, and this was a great way of accessing it. Uh, we have some more hacking, freaking, wares, viruses, crack, all that good stuff right here. These uh, these are where I spend the majority of my time, like hash party great password hash cracking site. We've got some other good stuff in there and uh, of course there's as to be expected the different drug marketplaces. Uh, music is surprisingly a category that is lacking as far as uh, sites that are indexed on the hidden wiki. Uh, we have other things on here. There's lots, whole lots of, uh, for those of you that like uh, text files, you know with a PH from back in the day, uh, Things like Frack, 2600, really good hacking e-zines, they're all on there. And you can find a lot of the uh, back issues and things that you can't readily find online, you'll find it on there in abundance. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I grew up in the 90s and I really, really enjoyed the things like The Bastard Operator from Hell, uh, The Guides to Mostly Harmless Hacking by Carolyn Manel, a lot of things from Cryptome, things from text files, a lot of those files that are... I don't know, they're, I guess they're for novelty purposes now, uh, but they shed a lot of light on the beginnings of hacking, and those are things that are very near and dear to my heart. So, moving along, there's the part that's probably going to give you the most trouble. Um, my recommendation is not to go on the deep web browsing for porn or anything like that, because there are some pretty unsavory elements that even some of the most adventurous viewers out there are not going to appreciate. And I'm sure you can pick up on the subtext of that. It's just a place to stay away from as far as that, that's concerned. So there's a lot of uncategorized stuff. Um, as you can see by my screen here, DuckDuckGo has some, uh, some good stuff on there. Uh, DuckDuckGo, for those of you that don't know, is a very good uh, search engine alternative to Google. It's not the prettiest, but it's not exactly going to be giving up your information whenever you're running around browsing all willy-nilly. So there's a bunch of different uh, international websites there, but just to, just to gloss over the hidden wiki, I don't want to make this all about the hidden wiki. If you want to find it, you, you can go through the link and find it yourself and check it out. Uh, there's a search engine here called Pipple, or People, uh, and it's really good about scouring the deep web, and it specializes in finding people. You can use emails, regular names, usernames, phone numbers, anything really that's going to be personally identifiable. Go ahead and plug it in there and see what comes out. I'd suggest against, uh, you know, searching yourself first. Uh, maybe search 20 other people and then search for yourself if you, if, you know, if you can't resist it. But uh, this is a publicly available website here that you don't have to use the, uh, the Onion Network to go through this. Um, for those of you that don't want to, you know, download software or maybe Tor Browser is a little bit too complicated or involved than you want to get, or if you don't want to have any incriminating evidence laying around like the Tor Browser uh, folder, what you can do is you can take any .onion website and you can add .tor2web.org on the bottom of it. Uh, here's an example right here. Okay, all of these websites uh, have... Ah, okay. So this demo site right here has blocked proxy access to it. But, um, basically tor to web works most times, unless it's been specifically blocked like we just saw. Um, you just take the dot .onion off the end of the domain, and of course it's just a random string of characters before that, and instead of the dot .onion you add dot .tor to web dot org. And what it's going to do is it's going to pass you through a relay, and it'll go ahead and, you know, display that content to you. Um, always remember the uh, the Tor etiquette. You don't want to be running Flash, BitTorrent, things like that through it. Not that you could be through this, but you know, just to be safe, I have to reiterate. So moving along, Pipple's pretty good. That's pretty cool. Tor Chat is something that's also pretty cool. Tor Chat is a nice uh, client. You can find it here through the GitHub project. It's uh, by the user Prof7Bit. 
and the project is TorChat. I'm just zooming back, zooming in there on my page, if I could say it. I'm zooming in on the GitHub page so that you guys can uh, see for those of you that don't have uh, very good resolution or bandwidth. So uh, from TorChat, it's a pretty cool thing. I tested it out with Daniel, who you might know from some of our previous episodes, like So You Want to Be a Programmer. Um, TorChat enables you to use just like this uh, random code, just like a dot .onion network or whatever, to connect to somebody else across the net and pass messages encrypted across this network. Now we've discussed other things in the past like CryptoChat or Crypto.cat if you want to check that out, but this is just another option and this one utilizes the Tor network which is pretty good. So I've tried this one out personally. Uh, I know that it works great in Linux. I'm not sure if there's a Windows client, but I'm, there has to be. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that depend on Windows, and I hate to say it, depend on Apple. So hopefully there's something out there for you guys. If there is, uh, just ask me and I'll see if I can hunt down a link for you. Here's the wiki on TorChat. Uh, you can see a little screenshot of what it looks like. It's very plain. It kind of reminded me of ICQ um, in the sense that there's ugly text and uh, indecipherable names. So, uh, moving right along, let's see if we can find uh, just a random .onion page that we can access through this Tor network and we'll also try to access it from the outside to see if we have any, any luck. Um, oh yeah, before I move on, I want to thank this guy, Jacob Applebaum. Uh, is an independent computer researcher and hacker employed by the University of Washington and a core member of the Tor project. For those of you out there that uh, that have Twitter, you need to go ahead and follow this guy. I believe his Twitter name is at io error, if I'm correct. Uh, he's a really really good hacker, really really good developer. Uh, he's gotten into a little trouble here and there. But for the most part, he's got some uh, some benign uh, motivations behind it. He's a very good guy. So thanks to you, Jacob, Jacob Applebaum. I really appreciate it. So uh, let's just uh, let's let's look for. Uh, we'll call. Let's go to the Silk Road just just for the hell of it. Alright, so I'm just pulling up Wikipedia here. Um, ironically enough, the the address is just right here on the uh, the Silk Road uh, Marketplace wiki. So just clicking it from a regular um, from a regular browser, we get nothing. Uh, Google Chrome could not find Silk Road. So let's try it with Tor to Web and see how that works out. Now remember, this may not work. Um, I don't I don't tend to do too much rehearsing before we do segments like this, so I don't know. It's always it's always fun just to see what what's going to happen with a live demo. So tortweb.org looks like it's having some issues getting through to it. So uh, oh wait, there we go. All right, so logging into the Silk Road. All you have to do to join is just give them a username. I suggest not using one. Uh, that you've used anywhere else before. Um, since this is not really a guide on how to buy drugs or guns, prostitutes, gold, insert illicit item here online, um, and I'm not advocating the use of drugs or anything like that, so for all my advertisers out there, hang up the phone, calm down, it's okay. Uh, but yeah, if that's what you're into, that's how to get to it. And uh, it's just I just use this, this as a well-known um, reference of you know how this whole thing works uh, once again I'm not advocating any of this stuff but um, now that you guys know a little bit about Tor you can go ahead and fire up Tor see if you can find any uh, hidden services or anything like that maybe from your favorite websites who knows you might might be surprised what you find anyway guys I hope you enjoyed this I hope you guys uh, enjoy checking out the hidden web and uh, on our next series, join us and we're going to be using Gopher, a obscure and some say irrelevant protocol that is still finding a little bit of uh, traffic online these days. So stay tuned for next time. We'll see you guys. If you like this episode, share, like, and subscribe. Peace.
All right, so one last thing. I just got a uh, contact form email <clears throat> from somebody, ironically, at the same IP that was just in the video, uh, right before I was about to export it. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, it says, I saw that you were doing an episode on darknets and anonymization. I'd like to tell you that you're free to hop onto the I2P IRC network and have a chat with the guys in Anon Ops. We are a friendly bunch, and that channel isn't actually used for anything besides chatting. To connect to the I2P IRC network, all you have to do is install I2P and go to IRC, blah, blah, blah. Kind regards. Anon. Not creepy at all. Thanks for watching, Anon.